Welcome to the 52 JavaScript projects and 52 weeks challenge. The project of the ninth week will be a weight converter. So this project is almost identical to the one before this project, the height converter. I will actually just change some variables and numbers, but the structure and the style and the, the JavaScript is almost ident identical, but I will still recreate the whole project just if you're a, a viewer who doesn't, who hasn't seen the project before. So let's start. First, you will need to create a div, give it the ID of container, open the div up so you're inside it and give it a input field. And the type will be text, close the input field. Oh no, you, need, you also need to give it an ID and type in input. This is where the user will input his height. For example, he wants to know what his height will be in meters, for example. So he types in five feet, presses on a button and it will convert it to meters. And we will create these buttons now. So create a button, give it the ID, for example, kilogram or kg, and close it, type in convert to kg right next to it create the, the another button with the id pound this will the this will be the button which converts it to pound and close it and type in convert to pound all right next we need the output um, field which is also a, a input but we will just change the id to output and we're now finished with the HTML file. If you uh, if we sa if you save everything and refresh the page, you can see we have an input field, we have two buttons and an output field, which does nothing right now because we haven't added any functionality with the JavaScript file. But before we um, style everything, we need to, we need to link the uh, style sheet and the JavaScript file. We do this by typing inside the head tag link rel for the relation which is style sheet and setting the href to the source of your style um, of your of your style sheet for as in my in my example it's style css because because it's in the same folder as the html file and also do the same for your javascript file go to the bottom of your body tag right above the closing body tag type in script sr S, src and type in the name of your JavaScript file. All right, now we're finished with the HTML file. Next, you will need to style everything. And we will do this by opening our style CSS and first giving our page a background color, a background color of hashtag free, 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 two, free, two, which is a dark color a darker as you can see here we'll set the height to 100% and now we will style the container by typing in hashtag and the ID which you gave your first div which is container in my case and inside this container you will set the height to 200 pixels set the width to 550 pixels set the background color to something a little bit lighter for example f5 e4 c3 which is um, like a creamy color i guess you could say also set the margin to auto uh, zero and auto and give your container a border of five pixels solid and the color code 88 b169 of course you can color them however you want i just did did it this way I don't know why I just I just did it and we will work with um, the grid system so type in display grid for a better explanation and a more deeper explanation of CSS grid I will upload a video some day I don't know but for now I will just um, link a really good reference which I always use in the description below alright so now we need to create the template for our grid 
we do this by typing grid template template columns and we will give it four columns which uh, where each of these four columns will have the same um, amount of space also set a temp grid template row rows and set it to one fr 50 pixel and then again one fr if you save everything and reload the page you will have this which looks kind of weird because um, the input field is way too high the buttons are really weird looking the way i want it to be is first you can open your console um, developer console and see that there's a grid you can see there's one two three four columns and one two three rows and the one in the middle is 50 pixel high so what i want to do is i want this input field to be here these two buttons to be in the second row and the last output input field on the last row so this is what we will do now so to do this first we need to access our input input field give it also a height of 25 pixels so it isn't that big and looks normal the width will be 250 pixels and now if you just save it refresh you can see it's a little bit nicer height and 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 size in general so next we will create the um, positioning of this input field so type in grid column um, grid column start and set it to 2 and also set the grid column and to 4 and you don't need to add the row because it's in the first row so you don't need, really need to do, do, to do anything also justify um, self to center so now it looks like this ignore this stuff this is, isn't um, posi positioned right right now but this looks right uh, good already now we just need to put some space between the border at the top and the input field we do this by typing in um, align self and center and now it sh there should be a little bit of space exactly this we will do the same now for these buttons and the output field so just access your kilogram um, button and just copy everything except for align self we will see in a second and also we will change the width to 125 pixels and also change the grid column and to free and now we need to grid um, now we need to add the grid row so where the row will where this um, button will start in which row in my case it's two you will also set the you will also need to set the end of the of the row which is also two and now you can see we have this button inside the second column uh, inside the second row we'll do the same now for the pound button so type in hashtag and your feet and just copy everything but you need to change the um, grid column start which in my case oh whoa, this was from last challenge i'm sorry it's pound um, which is three and here it will be four the row can stay the same save everything and now we have two nice buttons right next to each other now we need to style the output field so do the exact same thing as we did in the input field just copy everything and change the grid column no you can actually keep everything you just need to add a row so grid row start will be two will be three and grid row end will be also free so and now it looks like this and to get rid of this um, space here you will need to remove the align self and now it's centered now it looks really nice so now we have a we, we have we have styled it successfully 
Um, of course, nothing works because we didn't add any functionality to our uh, main JS file. But this is what we will do now. So the style CSS is ready. Now we will work on the functionality. So first we need to create two variables. First, the variable for our button, so we can access it later. So type in document dot get element by ID and type in the ID of your button. In my case, it was kg. Also do the same for your pound button. Just name it pound button if you want and change the ID to pound. So now every time we click, um, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, every time we want to access these buttons, we can do this by typing. No, I mean, it, it is already accessed. So when we work with um, these variables, JavaScript will know that, that we will, um, that we want to access these two buttons. So now we can work with them. For example, we can add a kilogram button at event listener. So every time you click on it, JavaScript will recognize the click and can um, um, return a function, which we'll, re which we'll create now. So at the event listener, create a function, open this bad boy up again, and we can do the exact same thing for our pound button. Just change the variable to pound button. And now we have two empty um, add event listener functions. So now we will need to create the input fun input variable where our input value will be saved. So whenever someone, whenever the user types in a number in here, we can get this value which he typed in there by typing, by creating a variable and typing document dot get element by ID and setting the and getting get and typing in the ID of course. And now we will just have a dot value. And now if you console lock the input, you can see, refresh the page, open up the developer console. And now when I type in, for example, 50 and say convert to kilogram, he will know the value of the input field. And now we can work with it and add some kind of formula to calculate the kilogram converter. So this is what we will do now. We will just get our output field by typing get element by ID, of course, again, ooh. Um, and typing in the output ID, the ID that you gave these, this input field, which is ID uh, output, and typing in dot value equals, we can actually set the value and we will set it to input. So when we, for example, when I type in five kilo, I, I want to, for example, I want to convert five pounds to five kilo. Now I press on the button and it will display five kilo. And now we'll just add some math behind it and it will convert it on the button click. So to get the um, kilo to, to pound converter, we will just divide kilo by 2.205 and also at the string, oh, whoops, at the string kilo. So every time we can test it now. So for example, I have 50 pounds and I want to know how much kilogram this is. So we will type in 50 pounds and convert to kilogram, which is 22.67 kilogram, which is right. And now we will create the same for the pound. You can actually just copy everything, paste it in here and change this little divide symbol to a multiply by symbol. And you change this here to, fuck, why do I always want to write feed? Change it to pound. And now we have a fully functional weight converter. So for example, we want to know how much pound 50 kilograms is. It's 110 pounds. So type in 50 and press on convert to pound we need to refresh the page first, type in 50, convert to pound, it's 110 and 25 pounds, which is kind of right, but I probably should have added a math.floor function, but for this tutorial, it's, it's enough, it works. You just need to know how to access 
variables in your HTML file and how to calculate stuff and it works like this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe or comment down below. And if you want to get the source code and build this project yourself or read this tutorial as a blog article, visit my website learn-webdev.com. Link is in the description.